Diesmal auch ohne, dass ich jetzt auf Deutsch was sage. Ich fange einfach direkt auf Englisch an, dass er das direkt versteht. Ja? Still not nervous. <lacht> okay, sind wir soweit? Läuft die Matz? Ja? Okay, ich gehe noch ein bisschen zurück, dass du da Platz hast. Okay? Okay? Yeah, I'm You running? Hank Jones, it's an honor to have you perform here at Jazz Baltica. It's a pleasure for me to be able to speak with you. Thank you for taking the time. There's so much we could talk about. If we sat here until it's your birthday at the end of the month, we still wouldn't have covered everything. So let's maybe start with what you've been doing most recently. Tell me a bit about your relationship musically with Joe Lovano, with whom you've been performing. Well, Joe and I have I've been doing uh, work together. We've done two CDs. Uh, we've done several concerts and a tour in Europe, as a matter of fact. So, Over the past year and a half, two years, Joe and I have worked together quite a bit. When did you meet him for the first time? I met Joe for the first time out in uh, Idaho at the uh, Lionel Hampton Jazz Festival in Moscow, Idaho. And uh, I, at first, uh, we, I was introduced to him by uh, uh, Mr. Doc, Doc Skinner, who was the, uh, uh, you know, the head of the uh, jazz festival. It was in Lionel, ha Lionel Hampton's honor, but Doc Skinner was the musical director. So he introduced me to... Uh, Joe Lovano. I didn't know him at the time, you know, but I, it was a fortunate introduction. I'm glad I met him. Yeah. 
we could spend probably more time talking about the people that you've played with, obviously, and the people that you've not played with. Um, but maybe before we talk about some of the people you've played with, can you tell me a bit about your early life with your family? Because the whole family was musical. You had elder sisters who also played the piano, but your younger brothers went for other instruments. Why was that? Well, Elvin and Thad, of course, uh, were ones who became professionals. But I had uh, five, four or five other brothers and sisters. Now, uh, most of all of them played. My brother Tom wanted to play bass at one time. He was the next brother older than Elvin. Elvin was the youngest member of the family. But then I had Paul, who played piano. I had uh, a sister named uh, Anna Mae, who also played piano and sang. I had a sister named Melinda, who sang and, and played the piano. And I had a sister named Olive, who played the piano. And Thad, of course, played trumpet. It's wonderful playing trumpet. Oh, I left out one, Edith. My youngest sister also played piano and sang. So what were the evenings like at home at that time? Chaos. <laughs> well, we had a lot of fun. We, uh, we had a, we, there was always music in us. We had a prayer piano, and uh, we had a lot of rec records. We played records. We wore out several hundred records. And I, I, I learned a lot, really, from like a, But actually, I, I learned a lot from my, my parents because my mother played piano and my father played guitar. And so it was always music around the house, and I think that had a big influence on me. And the, the player piano also had a big influence on me, because I, I was always, you know, I, I, I was always amazed that the keys were moving and there was nobody playing the keys. You know? I thought there were little men inside the piano playing, you know. You've played with so many well-known people. We could perhaps talk for a little bit about Ella Fitzgerald, because you accompanied her for several years. Um, what is your main memory of, of performing with, with Ella Fitzgerald? Well, Ella was uh, a great performer. She could sing ballads well. She sang up tunes. She sang uh, uh, hip. She sang uh, scat. She sang blues. She, 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 uh, she was one of the most, probably the most versatile singer ever to come along. And she was, had a wonderful personality. I got along wonderful with her. She was very kind, very nice, very soft-hearted person. And she always had that, that sort of little girl personality, you know? It was really wonderful. It showed up in her voice. She had that, that wonderful voice. Tisket a tasket voice, you know? <laughs> the motto of this year's festival is on sax. So I'd like to ask you about a couple of the saxophone players that you work with, two of the most famous saxophone players in the world, of course. Um, maybe we could start with, with uh, Lester Young. Well, it's a good place to start. There was Lester Young, Coleman Hawkins, uh, Flip Phillips, uh, Chew Berry, you might not know him, but he was a fine tenor saxophone player. Um, Sonny Stitt. Um, there were a lot of interesting, oh, Stan Getz, of course, and many more, you know, many more. Now, those are just a few, you know. When you look back at the way that jazz has progressed over the years, what would you say is the state of jazz today? I mean, people talk about different decades. There was the bebop decade, there was the cool decade, and so on. Do you think that jazz has, has gone off in a different kind of direction these days, or do you still feel at home with the jazz music being played today as you always have done? Well, you know, that's an interesting question. I believe there is a slight tendency for musicians to experiment more these days than previously. I think that some musicians have, um, I think, in their own uh, estimations, have created a new style, or perhaps not really, but they are trying, so you have to give them credit for trying. I, I, don't, I don't think jazz will change you know, that much over the next, what, several years. I think it will always be basically the same. There will be innovations, there will be slight changes, but not basically. I think the, the basic form will be with us for a long, long time. You know. How do you feel about the expression, it's not just what you play, it's what you don't play that really counts? In other words, the space between the music, it's the timing that counts. Well, you know, that, that may be quite true. I, a long time ago, a friend of mine, you know, you might have heard of Earl Garner. You know, Earl Garner told me once, he said, it took him 20 years to learn what to leave out. That's significant, because he, that meant that um, you, you, you don't have to play millions of notes in order to get the, the, the effect that you want. Sometimes a few notes will get the same effect without all the extra histrionics and so forth. You know. Can I ask you if you remember what you were doing on, I think it was May the 19th, 1962? <laughs> Does that date ring a bell? <laughs> no, it doesn't. No. Should I tell you why I mentioned that date? Wait, why? Tell me. Quickly, quickly. Someone had a birthday on that day. 
May 19th. And he was the president of the United States at the time. Abraham Lincoln. No, no, I wouldn't be. <laughs> uh, oh. We're talking about JFK. JFK, of course. Yeah. Ah, right. And Marilyn Monroe yeah. sang him Happy oh. Birthday. Hmm. Were you involved in that? I'm sorry you mentioned that. Well, yes, I, I did. As a matter of fact, I was playing uh, the piano in the band at the time. And um, when she sang, I accompanied her. She sang Happy Birthday to You and Thanks for the Memory. Now, I won't mention who she was singing you to. I've already mentioned that, so we don't have to worry about that too much. Thank you very much. Tell me about some of the other things you've done most recently, because, I mean, it's amazing, I think, that at your age, you're still working on a lot of new projects. We're not just talking about things you did years and years ago. In the Mm. last few years, there have been a number of different things that you've worked on with totally different kinds of people. Well, you know, I'm always uh, forward-looking. I I believe in trying to always... uh, do better than I did the last time. I'm looking for new things to do, new ways to do things. And yes, I'm, I've reached a certain level of age. At, I, I reach, I think I'm, I think I'm 89, I believe. You know? I can but confirm you know, that, yeah. You know something, I, I don't feel a day older than 88. Well, you don't look a day older than 60 at the most Thank me. you very much, that's very kind of you. <laughs> There are a lot of things happening for your birthday celebrations. This is, in a way, the beginning, but it goes on when you go back to America. Give us an idea of what will be happening once you get back to America to celebrate your 90th birthday at the end of the month. Well, I'll be, I'll be rehearsing uh, for a TV show and appearance in Japan uh, at the Tokyo Jazz Festival. Um, I will also be doing uh, several, several of the Blue Notes in the in Tokyo area, Tokyo, Nagasaki, Fukuoka, perhaps, and... Um, course, Togo. Um, then I'll also maybe doing, be doing a recording date while I'm there. And I think that's about it. You know. Other you than that, I won't, I won't be busy. People 50 years younger wouldn't be able to deal with. How do you manage to stay so fit and travel around the world as you do at your age? Wheaties. <laughs> I think on that note, we'll leave it. Everybody make note of that. It's Wheaties. That's the secret to a long life. Hank Jones, thank you, you very much indeed. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thank you, thank you. Kids, kids are pretty people. Thad Jones original. Mm. Now we're gonna, we're gonna let Hank play a few solo pieces. Let's see what he feels like playing. What do you think?
Jones. One of the most brilliant musicians you'll ever encounter. Great Hank Jones. Woo! Oh, look at me now. <laughs> Hank, take another bow.
Thank you once again. It's really a thrill to be here and be able to do some things like this. Ooh, great Hank Jones. <laughs>